Everybody can read a 15-page document. I don't even know where I got this one. All it is is 15 pages where it lists all sorts of different maxims of law, right? Go on and again, go to Bouvier's Law Dictionary, read them, print them, do whatever you want, read them. They're easy to understand because maxims of law, I mean, one of the maxims of, of law period is that laws have to be short and concise to the point. The shorter, the better, the more profound, the, uh, the, the more force and effect it has. We covered that in one of the previous lessons, right? The shorter a sentence is, the more rock solid it is, the less that there is open to interpretation. That was the one where I talked about I am. There's not much left for interpretation there, right? You can expand on that, but that leaves pretty much everything. Um, that could apply to, uh, I won't get into that. How many maxims do you have listed there? Oh, geez, I don't even think they're numbered. There's got to be at least 100, 150. There, there's a lot of maxims of law. And again, all maxims of law are self-evident facts, period. They're just self-evident. They're just, they're so well-established principles that you don't even need to write them down. To they, they don't need to be in law books, even though they are, obviously, they're right there. So, yeah, they're like all sorts of little gems, okay? Um, expressions and words, I mean, um, the meaning of words is the spirit of the law. Somebody actually brought that up with me there, they were like, oh, what about the context of words and laws? So, well, absolutely that applies. That's why, uh, well, here's another beauty, that leads me to something else before you even finish that thought. If a law, quotation marks, a statute, whatever you want to call it, an act, if it does not have um, a preamble, then it's not a real act or, or, or law or anything. What do you mean by preamble? A preamble is the blurb above it that says uh, what the meaning or intent of everything to follow is, is about. What is the meaning? Why was this law even made? It has to have a meaning. There has to be a reason why the law was even made. And if that's not there? If there isn't one, then there's no... How could there be a law without a meaning or intent behind it? Yeah, intent is everything Intent in is everything in law. Period. In the Chiropractic Act, the <clears throat> definition, the preamble, there was no preamble in what I read today. Yeah. There was just definitions and then a long-winded... Which, which really surprised me, actually, when I actually read the thing. Yeah. It's 97% regulation yeah. of like, what happens if you're a chiropractor who gets out of line. Yeah, because it's just basically, <laughs> yeah. But there's no, but there's no philosophy of the profession, there's no spirituality, there's none no. of these things there. So, so, how, so somebody had a complaint against you, how could you possibly dissect a part of that law, the chiropractic law, I guess that didn't show up on camera, Joe was talking about his chiropractor's license and the chiropractor, uh, Sorry, maybe I should, and that can be edited out. Okay. Uh, Citizen Kane uh, <laughs> brought up the question about the chiropractic whatever act or something. Okay, so some, if a complaint was made against an individual based on that act, and you had to go and address the part of the complaint, and you had to say, well, we have to see what the spirit of this act was in the first place. What was the meaning behind it to see if this was actually violated? Because the intent of what I, what I did, and your intent and everything, if there is no intent to the law, you cannot dissect it. There's no way to possibly make a judgment on, on your actions. So if there's no preamble, it has no force and effect at all. Income Tax Act has no preamble. Of course it doesn't. Where are you getting that? I mean, I, I truly appreciate what you just said. Yeah, did there's an actual just, source just, for that. Yeah, did you figure that out over time? or did you I figured that out over time, and there actually is a source for that. Yeah, I think, right? I, read, I, think I read that. And man, if I could recall all that information on, on command, um, yeah, it's like a friend of mine who told me one time that uh, they said, uh, I know who that is, and he knows who it is. And he used to tell me, yeah, he goes, you know, when, they, when you go to court and they tell you to swear on the Bible and to, to, to give the whole truth, uh, the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And his response to that was, if I could do that, I'd, I'd, I'd be in that book, not swearing on it. <laughs> right? It's another one of those. So. <laughs> uh, that was one of my favorite ones I've heard recently. Okay, so another one is uh, the Interpretation Act, and I brought that up in other uh, lectures, whatever you want to call it, about how, um, actually, if you want to call this a preamble to some Canadian laws, you could almost take it that way, because they call this the Interpretation Act. This is how to interpret some of their laws. So that, that's kind of along the lines of intent. And, when, and the Interpretation Act is where they redefine terms. So common English terms that we think mean one thing mean something a little bit different according to this Interpretation Act, right? 
So it's like your own little dictionary in some of the definitions. A lot of the, so whatever word you read in act, well, sometimes you need to find in this. If not, then you go to Canadian Law Dictionary. That used to be the basis for all our arguments until we realized I just don't give a shit about any of their acts at all because I have to contract with an act to have any force or effect over me, right? We all have a driver's license, and based on that license, they charge us under the Highway Traffic Act. The license binds you to that. Every application you make is going to be to apply for an act of government that they're going to then claim has grants them jurisdiction over you. Okay, so that's the Interpretation Act. Read that. The other big one is the Canada Evidence Act. What is evidence? Might come in handy if you're going to court. Call me crazy. Um, I think that's it. Other than that, I've just got another copy of the Constitution Act here. And then Section 52. Uh, I think 52 is a big one, personally, because where it says that this is the supreme law of Canada, this is it, this is the supreme law. And if anything's inconsistent with this, it has no force and effect whatsoever. And this, it starts off, uh, the start of the Constitution Act, the Charter of Rights and Freedoms, basically tells you what government can't do to you. And then 52 says it's the supreme law. And if they do something that they're not allowed to do based on the first part of this act, it has no force and effect. Well, that's pretty much every act that's not in the Constitution Act. That's why nothing can have any force or effect, because almost everything they do violates your human rights in some form or fashion. I think extorting money out of you to pay debts owed to you is pretty much a violation of your human rights. And I think that voids the Canada Revenue Agency Act or the Income Tax Act. Right there, just that one argument voids the entire act. They cannot extort money out of you to pay a debt to you. And then all you have to do is establish that the debts that Canada owes is owed to us. So simple arguments, simple, 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 simple. So that's all I got for that. That's reading material. Other reading material, like I've told people, and sometimes I just like to chase down definitions in Black's Law Dictionary. I find that fun. Most people won't for some, I guess, maybe. Maybe I need to get out more, I don't know. Where do you get your Black's Law Dictionary? I get it from my shelf okay. right there where it says Black's Law Dictionary 5th Edition. For, for giggles, I went to the Winnipeg Public Library about uh, nine months ago. Yeah. And I requested several copies and they're still on Yeah. There. Uh, yeah, and, and there's that. only one that they let out, and it's a 1998 edition. Yeah. yeah. And all the other ones can only be looked at in house if they're there. Yeah. Go to uh, like Wiseki <laughs> Books on. I want to see what our, no, on uh, what was it? Osborne. Yeah, it's already Osborne there. Go to Wiseki Books. Put your name in there when they get a copy in. I don't care if it's at edition one through nine. So they like to change definitions. People think there's a big conspiracy with the changing of the definitions. Uh, I don't really think that there is. It doesn't matter. Yeah, just, ex just as a note, <clears throat> when I worked at the airport, <clears throat> uh, we had to know the, uh, uh, the, the, Air so the, the Aeronautics Act. Okay. And the way we understood it was that the Aer Aeronautics Act supersedes all acts. Um, well, Section 52 of this pretty much disproves that. It says that this is the Supreme Law of Canada, period. Unless somewhere in the Aeronautics Act that actually says this supersedes the, uh, the, 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 Canada, the Constitution Act, then that, and it's great that somebody told you that. The, the reason why it was said is because... It's such a vital we, piece of infrastructure? Well, if you read on NASA or the U.S. Navy on how they do their acts, yeah. anything that comes over Canada is the Aeronautics Act and lands in Canada. Okay. So... Do we care about that? Well... I don't. They can write any piece of. They, they no, can write but it, anything. But it's, a, it's just an interesting. It's an interesting note. question, though. Like, it is. So you have law of the land and law of the sea. Maybe what you're alluding to there. Land, the law, land, the air, or something. Yeah. Is there a law of the space? Yeah. I like that's what kind of got me when I was doing my job. Is just, I, I, when I looked at my criteria, yeah. what I was, the job I was performing. Yeah. I can see. I can see national airspace being something very important, especially for government. So maybe government considers it to be. You know, one of their one of their, their 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 prime acts, I guess. I don't know, the Aeronautics Act, because obviously they want to have control of their airspace. They don't want the Chinese or the Russians, you know, flying uh, whatever over our. Just, just check this read, read, read it. Yeah. Just, yeah. Check, just read it and see, and, and check it out and see. Um, I might, or somebody else could read it. <laughs> <laughs> and just give me a give, give me a cold notes version of it. Okay. So I like that idea even better. <laughs> you read it, and you tell me what part of that act you think's 
you, th you think, you think actually verifies the claim that was made, in case everybody didn't hear it, that, uh, that Canada or maybe the airport authority claims that the Aeronautics Act supersedes all other acts in Canada. Well, aren't airports not technically part of the Canada. I don't know because I, I know, like, if you land in the like in Canada or in Germany or wherever, it's still international. You're not actually until you cross the border in the country, and, so yeah, it course. might actually have a higher stance. Just well, see, this is actually a very valid uh, sovereign point because um, when you consider the fact that, like, say, the Chinese embassy or the American embassy in Canada is not Canadian soil, when, it's actually American soil. When you when I worked with customs, when yeah. a plane landed and people were leaving the plane to come through customs, if there was an issue. You were not allowed to enter Canada, yep. or if you were, you were held in, in a cell. Because it's a port of entry. Re, that's right, redirected. Yeah, it's still international. Yeah. It's still international area. Because I used to tell people, you see that yellow line? They're going, yeah. I says, well, this is the United States. That's Canada. That should tell you right there that Canada isn't really a landmass of any kind. It's just jurisdictions. Yeah. That yellow line was literally like this is actually very valid for free men kind of stuff because I try to make this point with people all the time, and that's actually helped improve it. A yellow line at the airport is one's international and the next is Canada. Yeah. I mean, that's perfect. That's brilliant. That proves right there that Canada's not really a landmass. I used to tell people, I said, look, if you're going to cross this line, this is what I'm going to do. Yep. This is what you have to do. You yep. cross this line, you're in the United States, I'm going to search you, and then you're going to go, I'm going to escort you to Canada Customs, you're going to come back through there. Do you so want to do that? Canada only has authority over Canadian business in its sales territory. And an international airport is outside of its jurisdiction. That's why there's a yellow line. This is where Canada kind of ends. Mm -hmm. Because it's not a landmass. It's a jurisdiction for a purpose for Canadian government functions. Period. I mean, this should all be just helping consolidate things in people's brains. Like the, the, the same way that technically my house, once, when I'm a sovereign, my house and my property where my fence ends, well, that's not Canadian soil either. That, that's my own. Period. They got no jurisdiction over me and then they walk onto my property. Then we can get into the other things. Oh, you don't have a land patent, you don't have this, you don't have everything else. It's like, look. It <laughs> <laughs> presumes the Crown's jurisdiction. I, uh, I didn't apply for a land patent. Well, who do I apply to a land patent for? What is applying? Does God have a fucking patent office? <laughs> no. And unless the government of Canada is going to show me the bill of sale where they bought the land off the creator. I'm not going to accept their land patent. How about I just print my own? My own law. Isn't that what Canada does? They print their own laws for their own soil, so I'll just print my own. Well, that, that raises an intriguing question. Like, <clears throat> the Canadian Constitution, that Constitution Act, which to me sounds like an, an oxymoronic title, that's the supreme act in the Canadian jurisdiction. Of course, the British Queen gets it from the from the Indians, from the natives, the indigenous. And of course, when they did that, they made them sign these false treaties, right? So these treaty documents are what these sovereigns yeah. are arguing. Yeah. Right? And and so those treaties they, aren't even in place. Right. Then they're not being honored, etc. Yeah, they, they, so is a treaty, but they, the treaty document with that. I mean, I'm speaking this aloud, troubleshooting this. Would the treaty document then should be superior to the Canadian? Yeah. So th there's not a valid argument. This it's almost like the Nui Corps argument, um, where instead of us contacting the government and saying, "Hey, you know, I'm claiming that you guys don't have the authority to issue a land patent because that authority came from your Constitution Act, which goes back to the Queen of England, which goes back to our trees with the Indians, and blah 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 blah." Instead of claiming that, what well, would be the smartest way to do that instead? Now, I'm claiming you have no authority, and if if you if you do have the authority through these treaties and everything else. I'd be more than happy to see your, 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 your argument. Other than that, I'm simply declaring that this little chunk of land right here is mine. I don't need your sovereign authority to grant me permission to my little chunk of land. All I need is my own sovereign authority to declare it. Period. And then the minute you go and you get a notary public to stamp that, that is already public recognition of your document. Send that into the government. I own this little parcel of land. GPS coordinates, this, this, it's in a square enclosure, the enclosure rules in Black's Law Dictionary, that's mine. If you're claiming otherwise, you've got 21 days to get back to me, right? And unless you've got anything short of a bill of sale from the creator, I'm not accepting your claim. Because I live on it. Now, here's a photo of me in my house. It's mine. 
做后脚你们请没有？<笑>